welcome to the Puyallup Public Library's podcast, Shush with Debbie, where we interview and connect with people of the library, city, Puyallup businesses, and the community. I am Debbie. I work here at the library as outreach technician where I mostly do outreach, but I really do a little bit of everything. I am super excited to welcome our fabulous guest, Vanessa Nelson, who is the founder and executive director of YBNB, which stands for Young, Black, and Brilliant. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you, and thank you for having me here on the podcast. I'm excited to be here. I am so excited that you're here. I've wanted to do this since the day I met you, which I'll never forget. I have. I just am so in love with your program. First of all, uh, could you read the little uh, description of your program? Our mission. Yes. Yeah, so our mission yeah. is to foster personal growth mm-hmm. and positive social interactions amongst youth through literature, discussions, and social events. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so inspiring. When I first met you, you were starting, I believe, a book club with the group right? Correct. Yes. And that's kind of how you got connected to us. Yes. Okay. Well, let's start with the first couple of questions that I ask all our guests. The first one is tell our listeners who you are and a little bit about yourself. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So like she said, um, my name is Vanessa Nelson. I am the founder and executive director of Young, Black and Brilliant, um, a nonprofit 501c3 organization. It's a youth um, organization. Mm-hmm. We was founded in 2021. Yeah, so this is our third year um, going forth. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, are you from the area? Are you from this area of Northwest? Yes. So yeah. I am from Seattle. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. So yes, okay. I am from Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Born and raised a Love native. It. Yes. Um, and I lived in Seattle up until I think me and my family, because I come from a family of six. Well, family of three, I should say, but I have mm-hmm. siblings that are, it's kind of complicated, but it's yeah. siblings, same age as my mother. So gotcha. my father has, um, it's like two generations, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Um, he's actually a hundred. So my, my dad made a hundred years old. My mom and wow. dad were 30 years apart. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So from his first marriage, he had three kids and gotcha. then three kids from his previous wife. Yeah. And then he met my mother. And that's when me and my siblings came along. So gotcha. my mom actually has five yeah. kids. So exciting enough, um, my father's the one that raised us. We lived in wow. Seattle, Washington. And then when I moved from Seattle, we moved to Berrien for a year. And then we uh-huh. went to federal, uh, moved to Federal Way when I was in the fifth grade. Gotcha. So I graduated from Decatur High School. Cool. Yes. And then went forth um, to Green River. And uh-huh. then, you know got married and started yeah. life and yeah yes so currently I'm actually going back to school to finish up my degree and uh-huh. it's a bachelor's of applied science in youth development so oh, that's <laughs> so perfect yes, yes it's so perfect and what about your other you have other jobs that you work at as well oh, every right. time I talk to you I think oh my how does she do it all yes yeah, so I currently work at Seattle Children's Hospital oh. I am in patient registration oh, I love of Children's Hospital. Yes. And my son actually um, would inspire me to work there. Dr. Bowles, a shout oh. out to him. He is my um, son's dermatologist. And yes. he um, actually started, he has eczema, allergies, and asthma. Oh, but gotcha. He, that doctor treats him for his alopecia. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah. And then I ended up, you know, started working there last year. Oh, that's, it's such a great place. It is, well, yeah, we could talk all day about that (laughs) in itself. Okay, that's wonderful. And so also, then the second question is, tell us about your connection to Puyallup and the Puyallup Library. Yes, so um, when we started our first year Mm -hmm. doing our literacy program, we wanted Mm -hmm. a bigger space for us to do our second year when it came to the kickoff, because our program Mm -hmm. runs from September to June. It's a 10-month program. Mm Mm-hmm. So we needed a bigger space because we yeah. had more kids. Um, with that said, I came here. Mm-hmm. I think I met you that you day, did. too. Because I've I seen online it. that we can reserve the conference room. Mm-hmm. And when we did that, I actually met 
um, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. And Aaliyah, mm-hmm. she, I had to, I think, email her, reach out to her. And she yeah. emailed me back and said, not only do we want to provide that space on the date that you want, mm-hmm. we want you to, we want to see about, you know, let's figure out a little partnership here where we can have you guys here um, first and third Thursdays of the month where actually we, you know, decided that later, but yeah. we can have you here twice a month and bring the book club, the literacy program here and yes. you can have this big space. And boy, did that, you know, I talked to my board and we yeah. tried to figure out, okay, what does this look like? And then there it was. And we have now a partnership with you. This is our second year and it has been fantastic. It has been. It's been such a great partnership for us, too. We love it. We love having the kids, you know, doing all these fantastic programs that you present for them. And you have so much involvement with parents and volunteers and bringing food. And I love following you on Instagram, too, because the group, you can see what they're up to, what they're, you know, what kind of like a fundraiser maybe they're having or, yeah, so... Well, what's your Instagram for YBNB? Yes. So our Instagram is young underscore black and brilliant. And what's so unique about our program? Um, that's one of the programs we run, which is a book club, but we're more mm-hmm. than a book club. And that's why we say yeah. literacy program, because, you know, every book, like I said, let's back up. Mm hmm. The program runs from September to June. July is when we celebrate them and we do a big banquet. But with that, the kids, every book they read, we take them out on a social event. Mm -hmm. And then we teach the kids life skills. We have people come in as guest speakers, teaching them, you know, different life skills. But then we also do workshop with the youth. Um, So our partnerships with all the different organizations, community members, like this all plays a part in these children's growth. You know, not only do they like, you know, I mean, some of them it's like, oh, I'm not a big reader, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but they come together for the community. Yes. And that was what inspired me. I wanted these youth to have a space. Yes. And to be together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have a safe place. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If reading is part of it and food is part of it and activities and learning. I mean, I've seen the robots. You guys had robots in there one time. That was Atomic Robotics. We have a partnership with them. And this is their second year coming out. um, And they learned, um, what was it? This past year, they they made mini bots and they built them from scratch. And they programmed them. I mean, it's been amazing to see and these kids get inspired because they're actually doing hands-on things yeah of course and stuff they maybe never would have been exposed to which is what yeah okay let's uh get to some of your questions that you've chosen here uh who has been your biggest influence what lessons did that person teach you all right okay i if I can't talk about my father enough, okay? Oh. My father, again, he, back in October, he uh-huh. turned 100. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> he actually passed away oh. um, at 96. But, he, I mean, we had to take the keys from him. And when he turned, I yeah. think, 90, 89, me and my sister had to take the keys because he still was trying to drive. But he was yeah. a very lively. But he, I think one of the lessons and the biggest things he taught me was about integrity, right? Oh. And being who you are and really living who you are, but also being that same person when nobody's looking making sure you treat everybody right that was one person that if you did anything for my dad out of his pocket he's going to try to pay you right it it, it could be you Mm -hmm. know whatever he was always that type like no you know what he does anything for free but the biggest thing for me he always showed me like he used to work for the they used to call them the Joe Francis Quincy um Quincy Jones's sister Uh um in Seattle and he Managed the apartment. So as we were growing up, he managed some of the apartment complex and he would tell us stories how, you know, they would have things out and he, you know, would make sure he put them in a space where they see it because he didn't want it to come up missing. So he would tell us, you know, make sure that, you know, you're trustworthy, make sure you're that person that people can rely on and be dependable. So that for me has always stuck with me and I'm trying to teach that to my son integrity is everything it is everything and I agree a hundred percent with everything you said and because you were taught it it comes naturally for you to teach it to yours yep. and other kids too which is such a beautiful thing it's one of my core values it <laughs> is I I love what you're saying everything you're saying um let's see can you tell me about a moment when a person's kindness made a difference in your life oh my goodness well 
I always think back, and it's so funny you mentioned this. Mm-hmm. I thought about this person. I know her name was Rhonda. I just can't think of her last name. But when That's I was okay. in high school, I remember my school going to the King County courthouse Mm -hmm. and this particular lady she pulled me to the side she was Uh african-american i was in i think a junior or senior and she said hey you know she complimented me and she's just like hey but have you have you thought about what you want to do you know outside of you know once you graduate i was like no and she said i want to invite you to the courthouse i want your parents to come and bring you because people don't think about you know some of the jobs that are out there when it comes to you know, the legal field. And she talked about court reporting. Well, that person, just her, you know, her kindness and just stopping me and just saying, Hey, she literally, I remember going, my dad taking me down there and she showed me the, um, courtroom and court reporting and what they do. Do you know, I enrolled in green river for court reporting for two quarters. Did you? I (laughs) Because of her. But, you know, I had to determine, you know, and I did tell her, I'm like, this is not for me. I'm more of an extrovert. I'm more, I want to be around people and different things. But just her showing me that. But she also walked me through how to, if I remember, me getting into school and stuff like that. She was one of the people that pushed me to, yes, to go on forth and do your financial aid and, you know, go forth. And that's when I, how I ended up at Green River. And I did take court reporting, but then I switched it to criminal justice. That's so <laughs> but cool. But her kindness and, her you know, kindness. her stepping out and seeing something in me. It was right? like a gift to you. And, uh, you know, and it inspired you to move on forward and eat, but you tried it. And that's really brave too. Mm-hmm. And it's also cool. I think I have my steno machine. Oh and my everything. gosh. I always thought it would be fu- a fun job. Oh my no, gosh. Ma'am. <laughs> it's good to hear that yes um let's move on to this question this is an interesting one what is your earliest memory oh my goodness okay my earliest memory oh wow I remember being a young girl Mm -hmm. I used to love the babysitters club oh the the books books. yeah and I was young yeah I also remember you know how you used to have to fill out that form to try to get books and the books were one cent I think yeah I don't know what that was I don't remember was it oh I don't know if it was Scholastic yeah it was (laughs) Scholastic oh my god and it's so funny we talk about Scholastic I'm gonna gonna tell you more about Scholastics and what they did for YBNB later okay but yes it was Scholastic yeah that's how long I loved those books when I was a kid too Right. But I, I just remember me, you know, wanting to um, order books and yes. stuff from um, Scholastics. But yeah. my, one of my earliest memories, I think, when I'm just thinking about books right yeah. now, because it's on my mind. Yeah. Um, a Babysitter's Club. I yeah. used to love, love those. their books. Yeah. I, I've i never read any of those, but they are still popular. So I know they're classic. <laughs> yes. What did you love about it? <clears throat> well, now my memory is like I'm 40 now, so I'm like, okay, I remember. But... <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just remember the, the stories. Babysitter. Yeah, good. I just remember the stories. The funny good, things. Yes. So what happened in life. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's classic. So just thinking about, I'm just correlating that with yeah. what I do now. And I'm like, oh my God, Goosebumps. Like, it was, it's a love oh, Goosebumps yeah. by R.L. Stein or something like yep, that. They're and, still here. Those yeah, are downstairs so on those our show. are the things that I'm just my earliest yeah. memory when it comes to books. At least. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Are there any funny stories your family tells about you that come to mind? Oh, boy. That don't, I don't know what they, but I can say is Mm -hmm. some of the funny stories, I think I just talked about it here recently, Uh actually, when, so my father, Mm -hmm. um, I used to get called home from school Uh when I was in middle school all Uh the time because my father would get sick, but they didn't know I would have to drive. So this is legally, Hey, whoever's out there, (laughs) don't come back for me. But I, I was, I learned how to drive at 12 years old. Wow. Okay, so when my dad was sick, I would drive him to the hospital. Oh my God. And I learned to drive at 12 years old. And the funniest memory from that is I got pulled over twice. Yeah. And my dad was in the passenger seat and he would show his medicine. He would say, I'm sorry, my dad, you know, my daughter, we had, I had no license and insurance, of course, <laughs> at 12. But, uh, <laughs> but, but we got, a, we got off every time. I and never it was got a safe. ticket. Oh yes. But you know, they can tell my dad was older then. I mean, I don't know if he was yeah. then at that time. Uh, 67. So he had to yeah. be like 72 or something yes. like that, but he had health conditions and I would get called left and right from school oh man all the time and i would go home and check his blood pressure and different things like that oh my gosh vanessa yeah so yes that's like some of the things that 
I can remember when yeah. it comes to um That's huge. Yeah, but it's funny because I would drive and then I would I did get pulled off. That's hilarious. Were you uh <laughs> let's just say were you ever tempted to uh you know, maybe well, we'll, we'll talk about that on the yes, next episode. Let's talk about that because uh, sneaking those keys. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that in independence? Oh, let's see. Let's move on to this one. What are you proudest of? Oh, oh, wow, gosh. that's a my, hard one. I must say, being a mom, yeah, um, just becoming a mom. And now that I'm looking back, I'm like, wow, my yeah. son will be 16 oh, in April. Oh my goodness, he's gonna be 16, and he's gonna be driving since we're talking about that's driving. Right. <laughs> He'll be getting his license and yes. everything changes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. His so, independence. Mm-hmm. Will be... Being a wife, being a um, mm-hmm. so I'm a wife. I'm, you know, a mother, and yeah. just being able to be a community member or yes. a mentor. I have a lot of accomplishments you or things that I'm proud of. Proud of. So, and starting YBNB is like the biggest accomplishment. It is. It's just so amazing. For these youth. Yeah. For, for the these community. Kids. For the community. This might be a good time for me to share my little story. That's okay. It. All right. So uh, over the last couple of years, I've always seen what you're doing and admired you so much. I find your, your work just inspiring because that takes a lot of bravery to go out there and just start something like this. But you are so successful at it. And um, one day, a couple of weeks ago, you came to the desk in the evening and I was at the desk and you had two young ladies with you and you guys had been in our boardroom uh, and uh, welcoming or interviewing or uh Doing an orientation. Orientation. For our yes, because I asked you, what were you guys doing? Yeah. And you said, we're doing an orientation. And these two young ladies had dressed up for the occasion. Yeah. And I watched how they were talking when I chatted with them to see, you know, how was the experience for you. And they were so in awe of you. Oh. And I could just see it. It just gives me goosebumps because they were so. I could tell they were so proud that you had asked them to come in that room and do an orientation with you. And that is so inspiring to see that in kids. And it's just the, it's the best. Right. And what was so cool about that? So now we're just, we're implementing. So when new parents, you know, express their interest in wanting their kids to come yeah. in, right? And this particular is her aunt, a new our newest member. And I said, you know, we're going to implement Building up leaders, right? Yes. And I chose these three young ladies to do an actual orientation so they can have the person that's coming in can have firsthand on, okay, of course, meeting yep. other kids first, but then also going through the whole program. Right. They can know what our, um, our high, um, sorry, the whole structure of the program, right? Yeah. And they can ask someone that looks like them, that same yep. interest them, what this program is like. Exactly. And they did the- they did. I can't. Yeah. I believe they did. I could just tell they were so, uh, just so into it and so admired you. And um, it's the lady in the courts. It's Rhonda. just like yeah. you uh, right. doing the same thing oh. with your kids. Yep. Oh my gosh, it was so Thank beautiful. You. Well, let's see how are we doing on time. Oh yeah, we're getting close. Let me see here. This is kind of a fun one. I think I'm going to do two more. Okay, so this one is kind of a fun one. If you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, <laughs> what would it be? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Lasagna. Oh, lasagna. I love, that is my favorite food. I don't know if anybody knows, but I don't just, oh my gosh. Olive Garden couldn't do it for me. Yeah. It has to be homemade. Oh, homemade. And okay. Yes. And I have two people mm-hmm. in my life. That's one's my cousin, one's like mm-hmm. my brother. Yeah. I call him my brother, I should say. Yeah. And his name is Lucas. And then I have Parche. Yeah. And they make the best lasagna. They've actually, Lucas has showed me how to make it from scratch. I remember being young, teenager, and I'm like yeah. calling him. I'm like, yes. how do you make this lasagna? How do you do this? But lasagna from scratch. It's. Love oh, lasagna. It's so good. It's such a comfort <laughs> food. All comfort. the cheese. How could it not be? So bad. Look. Love it. <laughs> Loaded. But yes, loving it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, let's see. For the next question, oh, this is this is a great one. What is the most important lesson you've learned over your career? And you're kind of, you know, you're young and you're in the middle. So I think the biggest mm-hmm. um, thing that I've learned, you get what you give out, right? Yes, you know what I'm saying? So I if agree. you give 
out love and kindness and stuff like that. Yes. You hopefully we get that back, right? But yes. for me, it's just making sure I give back. Yes. Right? And I just... I'm a joyful person. You when I are. get up, I'm a morning person. I probably irritate a lot of people, but <laughs> I appreciate life. And I have a whole story t- behind that, but I appreciate life. And life is yes. um, something I don't take for granted. If you, you know, it's a whole yes. other story behind that, but I don't take life for granted. Yeah, I agree with you on that, too. I find myself being mostly a joyful person, mm-hmm. too. Maybe that's why we connect. That's that exactly why. Because, Debbie, when I see you, I mean, we kindred <laughs> I know. We, we love to chit-chat, <laughs> talk about this and that. I love it. That good energy. Yes, energy. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, to wrap it up, let's say, because we've kind of talked about some books. Are there any other things, any other books or things you'd like well, to? Well, I want to shout out to Tori Modernato. Oh, He's yes. He's in New that's York. Right. We have, that was the second book. I think he, he, mm-hmm. the book. Um, he's the author of t- um, the book Tight and then the book Hands. And mm-hmm. he has a lot of different um, okay. books out there or whatever. But Tori Madonado, he's been an inspiration. He has came on Zoom with the kids twice. Oh. We started off on <gasps> uh, on Zoom with the book club. But then, you know, he in the library here last year, he came on Zoom with oh the kids. Gosh. Like, you know, um, yeah. So Tori Madonado, I'm going to shout it out because we've read yeah. two of his books. But then he's also did a Q&A with the kids. And yes. Just amazing. So hopefully we can get him here. Right? Yes. One of oh, years. wouldn't that be fabulous? <laughs> Let's try it. He's for one of the best youth authors there is. He's, okay. His books are amazing. All right. So perfect. Look them up. Look Tori em up. Modernado. Okay. Perfect. Um, anything else you'd like us to know? Any upcoming yes. programs? Well, or? what I'm going to say is we're always in need of volunteers. Oh, if yes. you feel like you can run a, um, or facilitate, you want to facilitate a book club discussion. Yeah. If you feel like you want to just come in and be, mm-hmm. do a workshop or teach a life skill, or you want to sponsor or send the kids on, you know, mm-hmm. a trip or do something to where, you give these kids an experience that you know they normally wouldn't have access to. Yes. Please visit our website. Yes. You know, um, yeah, that's, I, I would say we do I need volunteers. Perfect. We need sponsors. We need, cause I want pe- these kids to be able to have and get experiences that they normally wouldn't have access to that's, and experience things that's outside of, you know, they're yeah. like, Oh, that's no, that's corny. I wouldn't yeah. want to do that. No, you're going to do it. And then they be like, Oh my God, it was, I had no idea. Best time of my life. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I see it in a whole different way. Yes. Perfect. Correct. So they could go to your website. Yes, so they go into your website and it says get involved. I okay. Yeah. All right. So and they, they can, could click on there. Yep. And then also they could look up your Instagram. Yes. Um, We're on Facebook. Facebook. Facebook is YB and B. So you can just okay. do YB and then the and sign B. Okay. You go on Instagram. Through the Piala Library, if you type yes. in Young, Black, and Brilliant, yep. we're on your guys' website. Yes. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Or just come to the desk if you're in the library. Come on. And come on we're in. We're here Thursday. So that's yeah. one thing. We run the book club every Thursday. And what's mm-hmm. so cool, we feed the kids every Thursday. And if you're a parent out there that's like, man, I really wanted my kids to have a little bit more socialization. Mm-hmm. And then also, I want them to have community. And I want them to read more, even if they do not like books. It's not, right. you know, at least they can have the community and be able to socialize. Yes, exactly. I love it. Okay, Vanessa, this has just been amazing. I knew it would be. And I feel like we've only scratched the surface. <laughs> but um, hopefully lots of uh, the listeners out there would love to contact you and uh, people with teens who might want to have them look into joining your group. Um, I love what you do so much. You're just an inspiration. And thank you. And did you have one more thing you wanted and to say? Just guess I wanted to, I just wanted to touch on the fact that these books, you know, these yeah. kids are able to see characters that they uh, they can relate to relate characters to. that they can see themselves in. So it's like yep. these books are kind of like these are things that they're going through and they're experiencing. So I just love that part. Just want to throw that I, there. <laughs> I love that too. You know, books just can open uh, so much of your mind and learning and uh, 
there's so many things, different types of books to read too. Different so genres, yes. yeah. So it's a wonderful th- for the kids to be exposed to that too. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, so with that, we'll say thank you, thank you so much, and I'll see you on Thursday nights as usual. Yes. And then let me know when uh, you guys serve the lasagna, will ya? Oh my goodness! Oh my yes, you gonna make it for me, Debbie? I don't know. How about we do it together? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Debbie, for having me on. Okay, it's my pleasure. Welcome to 